My guest today is another entrepreneur cut from the same cloth as the patio book authors we previously had on the show. Much like them, he too has made his own luck by self-publishing his work online. However, his choice of platform was unique, the Kindle. After distributing more than 7,000 copies of his book, The Ark, Simon & Schuster signed him to a two-book deal. Please join me in welcoming to the show Boyd Morrison. Boyd? It's great to be here. Hey, thanks for coming on the show. Appreciate that. So now you're in town. You're you're basically you're talking to a lot of people about a lot of things. But mm -hmm. you're in LA, so we assume you're talking to people about movies. Like, is that is that what's going on there? Uh, I do have a film rights agent. In fact, I just got done talking to him, and uh, we are of course open to any possibilities for for movies for my books. Um, and we'll see what happens. He's shopping it around. Very good. Congratulations on that in advance. Thank so, you. Um, so tell us about the, the arc. What, what is the story? Tell us about the novel itself. Okay. Well, I'll give you the pitch that I gave, that got sure. my agent for me. A relic from Noah's Ark gives a religious fanatic and his followers a weapon that will let them recreate the effects of the biblical flood. And a former combat engineer named Tyler Locke has seven days to find the ark and the secret hidden inside before it's used to wipe out civilization again. Sounds like a great movie. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can see why the Hollywood people are after you. Um, and how long did it take you to write? Um, it took me about a year to write, and then when I got my agent, we, we did some more edits, and that took another couple of months. And so now, did you, when did you start writing it? Was it, was it is this your first novel? Or? It's my third novel, Oh, okay, actually. So. I have two other novels, and we're currently um, talking about publishing deals for them as well. And they were on the Kindle as well. Oh, okay. Um, so I had three books on the Kindle. Now, did you were these for sale, or did you? Mm -hmm. They were. Uh, how much would, would you purchase these for in the Kindle? The the Adamus Blueprint was my first book, and that was ninety nine cents because I wanted to give an sure. introductory offer, kind of you know bring you in, and then I priced the other two books at a dollar ninety nine. Okay, so very very reasonably priced. So. Yes, yeah, so it, was it was definitely priced a sample, if you will. So. Exactly, I I considered it my promotional money that I spent instead of pricing the books higher and then spending the money that I would have brought in at a higher royalty rate on advertising or things like that, I just priced it at a lower price and let the Amazon bestseller list do a lot of the promoting for me. Ah, oh, very good. So that's how you, I was curious how you did it, because I knew you put it on the Kindle, right? Mm -hmm. So most of the people who have been on the show, like I was telling you before we started the show, um, come out of the patio book world where people gave, you know, gave right. away their books for free. Not even, you at least got some money out of it, so. Well, uh, the, the interesting thing is that I gave them away on my website. Oh, you did. And okay, so you, had you could download them in um, PDF, EPUB, Moby Pocket, or um, or read them online. Uh, but I also put them on the Kindle as another way for people to um, get them, and that's one of the reasons I priced them so low, so that they wouldn't be competing with each other. So people who have a Kindle would feel like, oh, ninety nine cents or a dollar ninety nine. That's not worth me going to the website, trying to download it, put it on my Kindle. And so, oh, so it was really the price of the conversion that really got people to. Uh, well, I think that in the hassle of it. Yeah. Um, do you think, do plus, you plus, there were plenty of people who said that they were just uh, wanting to support an, an author, an indie author, trying something new. Sure. Yeah, there is a, there is a bunch of there are people out there actually patiobooks.com. Mm -hmm. People uh, can can actually give donations directly to yes, you know, the author and patio books itself. Mm -hmm. And um, there's a surprisingly number of a uh, good number of people will actually go and do that. Right. So, um, but do you, do you think having um, some sort of price versus free when you had it in the app store made it so that at least people took it a little bit more seriously, or do you think there was what do you think um, the psychology of that was? I don't think it was, uh, I think because I was an independent author, there, there was some reluctance to consider me seriously. Uh, but I don't think having a price or no price was the difference. I think what the Kindle gave me was a platform for people to find my books that I didn't have with my website alone. Right. Um, because it was, and because it started generating word of mouth, the books rose on the bestseller list, which made them uh, apparent to more readers. And when they bought it, it kept them on the bestseller list. Now that's so it is a positive feedback loop. You're competing with books that cost 20, 30 bucks on the bestseller yes. list. And so they just simply can't compete with you on the price. So. Right, right. And, and so if the quality is yeah. comparable, yeah, then, then, then it's a good deal. The and uh, for, really awesome. for a month or more, The Ark was actually the number one techno thriller 
on I didn't the Amazon that, really? Kindle. Yeah. So this that's amazing. So you're beating out people like, I don't know, Lincoln Trial. Clive Cussler and Brad Thor. And, and so I, so tell me, so now did you have an agent when you did this? I was, did. You did. I found my agent in the summer of 2007 at Thriller Fest, which yeah. is a conference for thriller authors. And uh, pitched her, gave her that exact pitch I gave you. And she said, as soon as I said the words Noah's Ark, she was hooked and wanted to see the first three chapters. And so I I'd spent another month or so polishing it and sent it to her. And that was, I sent it to her on a Thursday. She got it on a Monday. And she called me that afternoon after wow. she read the first three chapters and said, Can you FedEx the rest of the novel to me? And I said, Sure. Of course. <laughs> I'll go to the post office right now. And uh, and so she got it on a Tuesday, read it, and called me back on Thursday and offered me representation. And now, who was this someone here at local? Oh, uh, her name's Irene Goodman yeah. of the Irene Goodman Agency in New York. Okay, so she is in New York, so she's yes. you know, top of the line. And on the yeah, she's lines. been in the business for 30 years, and she, her, she has an agency of, I think, five or six agents working for her as well. Okay, cool. And um, so, so now this was what two years ago? I think you said. Yeah, t summer two thousand seven. And so then you put this out on the Kindle when this was uh, uh, early two thousand nine. Okay, so it's been like a year and a half. What happened in between? Was she pitching it? Was she it was. She she pitched it to uh, a f quite a few publishers, and uh, I got back what I call good rejections. Sure. Where they say, oh, it's great story, fast paced, but for one reason or another that was not consistent at all that I could you know, point at, okay, everybody thinks I should change this part of the book. No, there, was, there was nothing consistent about it. And so they just didn't take it. I, I had one uh, editor say that there was too much action in my action <laughs> in adventure action book. book. <laughs> yeah, It's too good. I just can't. I'm sorry. I right. The action was nonstop, and that was yeah. apparently a problem. It was a terrible thing. I right. Yeah. So... Um, so basically, so then you you go through, you know, all of us have gone through this whole cycle, you know, Siglers, and you know, all these people who are now succeeding mm -hmm. have been through this, you know, cycle where it's we're just sort of spinning our wheels and mm -hmm. sometimes years go by. In your case, you're lucky, you're only, it was only two years for you. For Sigler, right. it was ten. And, yeah, you know, it's, yeah and, and Steve so, Barry has a very similar yeah. story. So um, so then basically you, you just out of the blue decide to go and put it on the Kindle, right? Well, and how did your agent, what I'm curious about is how did your agent react to that? Because I would she think. She thought it was a great idea. Really? Yeah. She, so she, was didn't, all, she was totally behind it. She thought, well, it, it can't hurt. Yeah. I mean, what, what well, could that, it hurt that's now? Still, but that's still, that's very forward looking for, mm -hmm. especially a New York agent I've discovered, even now, yeah. even after seeing some of the things that have happened, um, it's still difficult for them to get over this. You know the idea that you're 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 giving you're you're giving free money away, right? That, you know you could be negotiating. So that's right, right. I mean, it, it, if if we thought there was a shot that publishers were still looking at it and giving it a shot, then we wouldn't have. Yeah. Okay. But it was basically so we had run out of yeah. 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 So why not? Literally, there's nothing so, to lose. So you throw it up on the Kindle, you get this huge fan base, and then mm -hmm. you start shooting up the charts past. Um, established mm -hmm. authors for a month. I mean, it wasn't even. Like, we've talked about people storming the charts on Amazon before, but that not staying there for a month. That's yeah. fairly unique. Yeah, I, I've seen other authors, and, and they do very well for a week or two because they're yeah. really promoting the heck out of their books, and then then it drops off again. But the word of mouth was was what really did it for now, me. Now, where did the word of mouth occur? Did it occur inside of Amazon or somewhere else or Twitter? Where, um, where did it happen? It happened uh, a few places. One was the Amazon discussion board which are very active, uh, particularly for Kindle readers. And so... Was it, was it in the Kindle section or yes. the action section? So it was people talking about their Kindles. Mm -hmm. And uh, what did you do? How did you engage with, with folks in those? Well, the funny rooms? thing, well, I, on my website, I can tell where people are, are coming from. And um, most of the time. And I can also see when they're searching my name on, on Google, which is a nice sure. uh, feature. And... One day, I just saw a huge spike in my hits on my website, and I was like, why did that happen? And I saw hundreds of people were Googling me, and I, I had no idea why. And then about a day or two later, I realized that somebody had started a thread on the Amazon dis discussion forums, um, and, and there was one thread on there called Boyd Morrison Rocks. 
was the title of the thread. And I had no idea that somebody started that. And they just said, hey, I found these books. They're great. You should check them out. And then other people responded, yeah, I love that book. And it's great. Or, or you should check That's out awesome. The Ark. It's, it's one of my favorites. And um, so once that happened, I found the thread and actually just went in there and said, hey, thanks for looking at my books. I appreciate it. Uh, it's it's great to, to find readers this way. And, and, and that was about it. I didn't... Some authors I've seen really try to keep their thread at the top of the forum by by updating by putting in right. a, a comment every few hours, and that really gets on the nerves yeah, of, of the forum people. members. Yeah. yeah, there's a right way to do this and a wrong way to do it. Yeah, yeah. So, but but it was for a while staying at the top of the forum because other people were commenting, and that's that's when you know the word of mouth is going. Yeah, absolutely. So um, that's fantastic. So basically. You get this going now. How many copies did you sell? Did you? Are you did you? So, so of all that? three uh, together, um, all three books together, I sold about seven thousand two hundred copies in three months. Wow, that's fantastic. Now, so that's more than that's actually the actual numbers are very low. I've discovered in the you know for traditional publishing. So, yeah, they actually are very fuzzy about you know. So, how many books do you have to sell in what period of time? To become a bestseller, right? Yeah, and the answer is, from what I could tell, pretty low. It's more. In the, yeah, and it, it really depends thousands. on what week. Yeah, that you come yeah, out. Sure. If you come out the same week as the Harry new Potter. Dan Brown yeah, book, you sure. know, you're <laughs> you're not going to be number one. Yeah, <laughs> that's for sure. But you can still do very well with yeah. numbers that are not large. Yeah, it's surprisingly small, and because of the Kindle uh, digital text platform system, I could see my sales on a minute to minute basis, and see how that was reflected in the ranking. So, all right, so take us to the, the this is interesting because we, we've actually never had anyone on here who's specifically gone and put their book on the Kindle using mm -hmm. Amazon system. We've had people mm -hmm. on um, who have gone on, who basically published through Lulu. Book Surge or, yeah, Book Surge or yeah. Lulu or one of these. Yeah. That's the typical path. So, so tell me, you know, how did you go about doing this and what is sort of the mechanisms, what's involved in doing it? And, it's a very simple system, actually. The You, you just go to dtp.amazon.com and as long as you have a uh, login for Amazon, if you've ever bought anything from there and can log in, you can upload a book yourself. Uh, it has now, three basic... What is it? You upload a PDF? Is that the idea? No. Or? PDF will look terrible. Do not upload a PDF. Okay, so it, big, it needs to be an HTML format. Oh, really? So all I did was uh, took my Word file of my novel, saved it as a web page, and uploaded that. I didn't do anything else. And that was it. Oh, and that, wow. and so that, that took you less than an hour. Yeah. Oh, took me. Yeah, not even. It, it's took me a lot more time to fill in the category and the description. <laughs> oh, the meta information. That the the meta information, the tags that you see when you go to the web to the Amazon page for that book. Yeah. You see all that information of the description, what categories it's in, um, and then I also paid a graphic designer um, a, uh, to develop a decent looking cover yeah, for all sure. my books. Yeah, your covers are great. They actually they look. Yeah, I, I'm very pleased with them. Yeah. and uh, I, that you cannot put a book on Amazon without a cover because yeah. then you certainly will not be taken seriously. It looks totally ghetto. Yeah, I've seen, yeah. I've seen some. Of and those and ones. but the the great thing about the Amazon store Kindle store is that once you have a decent looking cover and you have a, a well written description. It's virtually indistinguishable from a published novel. Yeah, they can't. Nobody, nobody. Unless would know. you look at the publisher, yeah, um, you can't tell. Yeah, and even then, even then, most people don't know publisher names. So, you know, no, there's ones they recognize, like Simon and Schuster, which right. is a good deal. But for the most part, people don't really, you know, it doesn't really register right. for them. Right, and it doesn't matter. You can make something. You can make something up that sounds publisher-ish. Right. Be, uh, yeah. You could. I think that in the field, you can put anything you want. Yeah. Um, I left it blank because um, yeah. okay. I didn't really. Didn't yeah, matter. Care about that? Yeah. Uh, but but yeah, you could really put in anything you wanted there. Now, did you engage in any other forms? Did you look at Goodreads? Yes, I, I joined Goodreads, Shelfari, um, one that was very early uh, to to be backers of mine was Kindleboards.com. Mm -hmm. um, now this is separate from Amazon. Yes. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. it's a, a separate website. Very enthusiastic Kindle owners. They're on there all the time um, in discussion forums talking about books. And again, somebody mentioned my book in a forum there. And so I went on and engaged them and joined. And um, we actually had a virtual book club for the ARC on there, and which was very well attended. Um, I did a, a virtual chat with them. Um, and 
but but I was also a contributor on other threads, and and they want people who are members, not just going in there, plug your book for a day, and then leave. Right, right. Um, and then the other big forum that uh, was very helpful was MobileReads.com, and that is um, n just for ebook readers in general. So it's Sony, Amazon, Kindle. Um, and any other e-readers e that you get online, Calibre and things like that. Um, and so I think a lot of the people on there, not only were there people who downloaded my books on the Kindle, but also downloaded the books from my website because I got emails from people in India, Australia, Ireland, uh, Germany, uh, yeah, England, Spain. And so obviously they were getting it through my website. So, okay, so now you, you go and you do this. How much, now, what is the split like, you know, when you put something up on the Kindle, and you put it up for, you know, less than a dollar or a dollar, some change mm -hmm. in some cases. How did you, how did, the, how did the, the split work out between you and Amazon? So Amazon gets 65% uh, of the list price, um, and you get 35%. So if I list my book at $1.99, even if they mark it down to $1.59, which is what they did, I still get 35% of $1.99. Okay, okay, so that's great. So I was making 70 cents on a $2 book, which if you think about, you know, authors making 10% on a $7 paperback, I was earning the same royalty yeah. on a $2 book. Well, you'd sold the volume to... But, but yeah, that, yeah, that's what a traditional publisher gives you is um, access to many more readers because there's still, a, even though it's very fast growing, there's very, very few people who have a, a Kindle or Sony e-reader. Yeah, you still need to get it on the shelves. I found so. Yeah. Now you've seen. I think you mentioned you saw a little bit of Scott Sigler's show. Yes. So you know that he has he has traveled the path of um, being a self published author. Yeah. To being uh, you know picked up by a major house and then to, bestseller. at the same time and a New York Times bestseller. But at the same time now he's putting out the Rookie, which is a book that his publisher rejected by himself, mm -hmm. and he's basically done a print run with it, and the way he described it was he'll probably make as much money on the rookie as he did off of his New York Times bestseller. Because he already has a platform to That's right. To so he's, he's been legitimized. Readers. And right. you know, he's sort of been knighted, and now he's, um, now, so his name is out there, his brand name is out there. So mm -hmm. he's able to sell, but he's able to get command much larger margins because he's doing it himself. So, right. which is, it's fascinating that maybe, it's interesting to see where this is going to go, because we all know it's going somewhere different than it's ever been before. Right. What the shape of that is going to be, I don't think any of us know. Yeah. Um, it, it seems to be that the traditional publishers are still a big part of it. You know, yeah, they have a lot to offer. Up. And, sure. and I was very clear up front on my website that I was doing this to get to make people aware of me so that I could find a traditional publisher. I was not doing this to go around the publishing industry, yeah. but to you know show the publishing industry that I could have a, a following. There seems to be a, a, a unison of opinion that the traditional publishing world is not obsolete. That you know, mm -hmm. all, every author I've talked to, even one who's a staunch individualist like Matthew Wayne Selznick, um, mm -hmm. it, you know, he's 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 probably the, the most staunchest individualistic. Even he is like, yes, I would I would sign a publishing. In fact, yeah. he has signed a publishing deal. It's a small mm -hmm. press, but still, same thing, just yeah. on a small scale. So. Um, and Sigler himself has said that even with his self-publishing book, his self-published book, that um, there is a lot of value that he just didn't realize that the publishers right. provide. He has to now do he's all cranking his own copy editing. editing. Yes. He has to find somebody to develop his covers and just find even like somebody. the business stuff and the day-to-day -day yeah. distribution. Oh, yeah. You know, the mind-numbing stuff that yeah. you know, yeah. keeping inventory and in stock and mm -hmm. just he's like it's crazy. It's like you just don't realize. Mm -hmm. So and then, and then it's just the, also the connections they have. Yeah. They, they know everybody in the business. Yep. So it just is a show, and lets me concentrating concentrate on the writing. Yeah, exactly. Which is where we all want to be, right? You know, more than anything. So um, although playing around with technology is also fun. I yeah. Think, so. um, but now you now one thing that was interesting about you is actually you were a developer at Microsoft. You were, you're on the technology I was, side. I was on the technology technology side. I was a um, usability testing manager yep. in the Xbox group. Okay. So, so it was a bit fun, but still, yeah. it, was it was technology. You weren't a lot of authors aren't also technologists, right? So yeah, you, were, you still hear the stories about people still using their old typewriter to write their books. Yeah, so they're no. writing longhand. <laughs> and, and, no, I, I don't. But think you that. were. I mean, you're you're natively a technology. Mm -hmm. Yeah, person. I worked for an internet company during the internet boom, and uh, yeah, yeah. So I've been. How do you think that, heavily involved? Do you think this influenced your willingness to treat? Uh, literature like software in a way, and mm -hmm. you know when when you throw it up on the Kindle, I guess it wasn't free. I actually was thinking it was free at the time, but never, nevertheless, it's close enough. And the same mm -hmm. thing with the Pio books, we essentially are open sourcing 
our books, mm -hmm. I, in my opinion. And so, do you think that that is that coming from the technology world influenced you in a way that you know many other authors don't necessarily have that mindset? That's that's very possible because I think there may be uh, some people who feel that there's a stigma with not having the book in print, that it's only in electronic form, and so it's not really a book. And I, I don't feel it. To me, content is content, whether it's on paper or electronic, and it's it's really just choosing the best medium to consume that content. And if it's electronic, great. And you know, I will say, without the internet and without the Kindle, I, I would not have a publishing deal. It just wouldn't happen because I wouldn't be able to reach readers around the world, which is just still mind blowing to me. And I wouldn't have a, a, a forum for for getting the word out and for other people to tell um, people tell tell their friends or tell other readers about my books. And and so I, I give all the credit in the world to the to the internet and Amazon and Kindle. So when you were climbing up, so uh, tell me how the Simon and Schuster deal actually happened. Did you reach out to them, or did your agent reach out? to My them? agent did. So your agent basically said, "Hey, so have once you have you checked out the charts on Amazon lately?" Yeah, right. exactly. Yeah, I, I was you know number one in Men's Adventure and number one in techno thrillers. In fact, all three of my books were in the top five for for months, and I was getting great reviews on Amazon. By the time I took my books down, I had forty four reviews uh, for the Ark, and thirty one of them were five star reviews, which is you know, it's pretty good. Very Amazon, good. Yeah. Uh, and especially for a debut author. Oh, sure. <laughs> uh, an indie author that nobody's ever heard of. And uh, so once I started getting those kinds of numbers, my agent started taking it out to a few publishers um, and see, testing the waters. And now, had they said, had Simon Suit just said no previously and, and now come around? Was that Touchstone what? hadn't, which is the imprint that is publishing my book. Um, they are, they had been more literary in the past and they, uh, have just changed their outlook to be trying to be more commercial, and so they were looking for um, something with more a lot commercial of authors, yeah. thrillers, and, and things like that. And so the timing was was perfect for that for me. But what also happened was um, I, Irene has a, a foreign rights agent working with her named Danny Barore, who is very well known, and she gave the book to him and said, "Hey, this is going great in the U.S. on the Kindle, and he's getting." foreign readers as well try selling this overseas and actually my my deal in Germany was the first one that was done. Oh, so you have I didn't realize that. So, you actually so I have deals in 12 countries That's and fantastic. counting right now. So That is fantastic. So, this came together very fast, didn't it? This was Oh, this is this has been <laughs> like a few months only a few months ago. Yeah, you yeah. Were still struggling. Yeah, in boom, early so March happened. I didn't have any readers yeah. and now I have a two book deal and now we're talking about my other two books as well. That is fantastic. It's crazy. Um, so, have you thought? So, were you aware of audio books before? Did you know about them? Or yes, yeah, I, I knew about Scott Sigler and what he had done, and I, I briefly considered that. But and and I'm an actor. So yeah, I was going to say I, I was going to bring that up, but I, you know, yeah, I considered you doing it, and um, decided that again, that wasn't the best use of my time. Um, I, I, w I had been working on um, a different book um, than I. I didn't work on the sequel to The Ark because I thought, well, if they, nobody wants the first one, nobody's going to want the second one either. So I worked on, started working on a different book, a uh, different series, and I thought my, my time would be better used creating new uh, novels rather than, I think it can be a little time consuming to create the potty books because oh, you have to read, <laughs> read them yourself. Yeah. And it just wasn't where I, I thought my time would be best spent. But, yeah. but you know, if, if that's what you love doing and and you, you think that that's going to make you stand out? Then I think that's a great idea. Um, okay, so now, how, what about the iPhone App Store? Did you look at that as a possible? Yeah, I outlet? considered that as well, and I considered um, Scribd and some other sites as well. I, I looked at Barnes and Noble, but Barnes and Noble didn't—they may now, but they didn't uh, allow indie authors to yeah. upload their books, which I think is a big mistake. No, it's silly. They, they still don't. So. And because Amazon had made it so easy. Um, I was really looking for stuff that was hassle-free, and that's also why I didn't uh, self-publish a print version. Um, really? Too much hassle to do that? Too much hassle, and, and another reason was if you self-publish a print book, it gets an ISBN automatically. Right. But the Kindle books do not. And so it. if it had not done well, then publishers can see that and go, right. oh, well, his book you know, only sold... 
50 copies. So, you know, we're, we're not even going to consider that. Right. Even if it had sold thousands of copies on the Kindle, because that's what they focus on. But with with no ISBN, if, if these had tanked, I could just never yeah. mention it. These, <laughs> these are just... Not me. That wasn't never me. Never existed. Guy. But because they had done well, I could I'd take advantage of it. Yeah, that's great. Um, and so, and, and the iPhone was just something that was too much trouble as well? I mean, well, I, guess I didn't really would, know how to... I know there are some iPhone apps. Um, you would have had to build an app. Yeah, the way, the way it works yeah, is you would have had to build yeah, an app. And I'm not a developer. So. Yeah, see, I actually, I, I, I kind of came, came to the same conclusion that it was too much trouble mm -hmm. very early on, and I found someone who had put some of the first um, public domain books up mm -hmm. and was selling them for 99 cents a pop. Mm -hmm. And so I, I contacted them and said, hey, listen, I've got this other book. You know, let's be partners. Yeah. And so I found, so I, I, I came, I, I pretty much had no work to do also, but I kind of went a different path mm -hmm. um, in terms of that. But um, the iPhone, the, the trajectory there has been like sold a lot at the beginning, back when there were no books in there. Right. And all of a sudden, Twilight and everything else came out, and just swan, unless you're on that sort of top chart somewhere, right? And nobody and that's, can find it. So. That's exactly the problem. And the Kindle app for the iPhone came out very soon after I put my books on the Kindle store, so I thought, well, yeah, sure, there's, there's a way for iPhone re users to read my books right there. Yep. And why create a different app when the Kindle store has a built-in way for readers to find me, as, as you said. It's really hard to get your name out there. Yeah. And because of the Amazon lists, that's how uh, a great way for readers to find me. Now, what do you think about now, now that you've done this, now that mm -hmm. you've basically vaulted yourself up on the Kindle, do you think it's it's like it's done now? Like so, if somebody comes along now and tries to do that, it wouldn't work again, or you know, because it's only going to work for the first couple of people who do it. Or do yeah, you, it's. What do you think the status of? I is? think, I think it's possible. I think if you have the right ingredients, it can happen again. Um, I will say that I was probably one of the first uh, authors to put his own books. I know there were some before me, and you know, I'm not going to say I was the first one ever put his independent books on there, but. There were many people on there doing that. And um, because of people like me and, and Jay Conrath, I don't know if you know him, he's a published author who also is putting his unpublished books on the Kindle, and they've been doing very well. And um, because of that, those stories, uh, everybody has been kind of jumping on the bandwagon, which is great. Um, and I think it can be kind of an American idol for, for sure. authors yeah. because readers will vote and if and if they like it they will tell other people about it which will push it up the list and more people will know and so it can happen but I also think that I had some some things going for me that not everybody does because I already have an agent so I can immediately take advantage of it instead of going on the agent hunt my agent could go okay let's turn on uh, turn it on right again because they won't come right and now. find you even if you no. Even if you're at the top of the charts on Amazon, no. I, people will not come and seek you out. That's, that's, no, that's you have unbelievable. to do all of your own legwork when, yeah. when you're doing this. And, and I had three books at once, um, yeah. which you know, also fed on itself. So if one, people loved the first one, then they went and searched out the, the other two, and it wasn't always the same one that they started with. Right. Um, you had a depth of inventory that you think might be exactly. into it. Um, I had blurbs from best-selling authors that I've met at Thriller Fest and other conferences, which now, I who's think, blurbed you? I know, I, uh, James Rollins, Douglas Preston, John Land, uh, John great. Case, Chris Kuzneski. Um, and so, now, how did you meet them? You went to cons and, and yep. basically you said, yeah. here's my Now, doesn't everybody do that? How did you? No, I, surprisingly I, few. Pe really? I mean, some people do, um, but uh, it's... Like, how did you get them to say, yeah, right, whatever guy. I mean, yeah, I, well, I got to know them. I, 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 well, I didn't just go and say... Hi, Jim. Nice to meet you. Would you read my book? Right. Um, I actually spent time with them, went out to dinner with them. So they got to know me and wasn't yeah, okay, knew so. that I wasn't a flake and, and thought there might be a potential for the book. But, you know, if the, even if they liked me, if they got the books and went, eh, I don't know. Yeah, sorry. They would, they would have gone, uh, sorry, uh, you know, this isn't right <laughs> for me or something. Yeah. And so you got to have all the ingredients there. But, yeah. but I think it can happen. But I, I think like any self-publishing story, they're they're all uncommon because either, you know, and I also had the books going out there previously and turned down. If my book had been accepted by an author last year, you know, we wouldn't be talking right now because right. it would be a typical publication Double story of I got right. an agent and then we sent out the book and it got published and so. But because you I was in that lose, no man's like, land whatever. of having an agent but not having a publisher, I, I was kind of in the middle. Yeah, got it. Interesting. 
Um, so now, who who are some of your favorite authors? Who are the people that you like to read? Oh, uh, it, it, one thing about going to conferences is that I've gotten to meet authors that I've read for a long time. James Rollins, John Land, Douglas Preston, um, but others that I, I love are Michael Crichton, Clive Cussler, um, uh, Dan, yeah. uh, Dan Brown. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Crichton's pretty. I love I, I'm a huge thriller reader. Yeah, and so I, I've read pretty much anybody who's written action adventure type books with scientific content or just you know lots and lots of action. I think you and Sigler would get along. So yeah, I sort of just have a gut instinct about that. He's, yeah, he seems a little bit more horrific than you. But, uh. Yeah, I I, <laughs> I do like Stephen King. Dean Koontz is yeah. another one who's you know I've read all of his books. Um, he he. He had been pegged as a horror author, but really he's a thriller author to me. Um, and so I, I think uh, he and like I, I'm not really into the horror. I do read Stephen King yeah. occasionally. Um, I mean, I, I've read a lot of his books, but I don't seek out horror books. I, I, like don't, go, I don't go to yeah. horror movies or anything like that, but I like fast-paced action thrillers. Yeah. Um, so now you were also I read somewhere you were a Jeopardy champion is that correct? I am. And so tell me how did that come to how did that come to pass? Tell us a little bit about that. Well, like most great things that happened to me, it was my wife's idea. Uh -huh. um, she was at the uh, she was watching TV and saw that Seattle was having a, a Jeopardy tryout, and she knew that I, I had been talking for years. Oh yeah, I can go on Jeopardy and win. And she said, Oh well, there's there's your chance. And I said, That's great. And so I went and uh, tried out in Seattle. And uh, actually, uh, two weeks later, they called me and asked me to come on the show. And so in a couple of months later, I flew down to L.A. and uh, did the show and uh, won. Uh, I was a one-day champion. Wow. Still, be great. A beat a three-day champion. Yeah. I was I was really worried <laughs> because you sit in the audience before you, you go on and oh, watch. Because really? they, they filmed they 10 film shows in two days. Yeah. And so you watch the other shows and... This woman was creaming everybody, not even close. And all of us in the the other contestants waiting were sweating that we would have to go up against her. And uh, my name got called. I was like, oh, well, I guess I'm not going to win. And went on and, and got lucky enough to get categories that suited me. Well, congratulations. Seems Thank to, you. The luck seems to be with you, which is yeah. always good to see. Um, well, we're just about out of time. When does the, uh, the book actually come out? It we'll comes in spring 2010 in hardcover and audio in the U.S. Okay. And then other countries at different times. Yeah, any, any month just to, or is it just still uh, we're, it? Yeah, it's still a little fluid, but, but spring, yeah. um, March, okay. April, May, sometime so, around. So May. coming up in the spring. Yeah, It'll yeah. It actually, we had talked about August, but they are so excited about the book that they moved it up to the spring. Um, so, Do they, and really so it'll still be called the Ark. It won't, they won't change the title. Yeah, in the U.S. it will be called the Ark. I just oh, they're going to change the name overseas. Or? They may, uh, maybe for the U.K. Um, we don't. Uh, everything's happening so fast. It's it's yeah. all very fluid. I just got my editorial notes for the Ark today, and we're going to change a few things. But the the narrative will. Well, they won't change your name. Same. So you'll still be Boyd no, Morrison, still be so. Boyd Morrison. So yes. just look for the book by Boyd Morrison coming out sometime in the spring. So so Boyd, thank you for being on the show. Thank Appreciate you for it. having me. Uh, thanks once again to Jace Calcanis who makes this show possible, and of course also to Mood Organ who gives us the music. This is Bibliotech. We'll see you next time.